And if I go silent for a few seconds, I've probably cut too far. Hi guys, welcome back to Phil's Corner. Welcome to the best channel on YouTube, dedicated exclusively to football shirts. My name is Phil. I'm a writer, critic, basically someone who spends his days talking about football shirts. And this channel is about exactly that, about the history of football shirts, the design of football shirts, the best football shirts of the modern day, and also the life of a collector, of a football shirt collector, what it means to collect shirts, how you can collect shirts, all those good things. It's all here at Phil's Corner. And today's episode is a really fun one because I've got a box right next to me, which is very exciting indeed. Look at this. Straight, of course, from the Borussia Dortmund shop. I'm sure many of you know what this is. This is the special edition kit that they released this year. So I'm really excited to open this. I'm not actually opened this yet. We're going to crack into that and also compare it to the shirt next to me, this 90s Borussia Dortmund shirt, which is part of the inspiration behind the new shirt. So there's lots of good stuff in today's episode. Do stick around. And if you are new to the channel, if this is your first time, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to keep up to date with all new episodes as they happen. And I've got loads planned in the coming weeks. I'm hoping to be a bit more regular with my videos over the next few months. So lots of good stuff to come. As I said, the best way to stay up to date with all the good stuff here is to be a subscriber, is to press the subscribe button and join the Phil's Corner community. Before I go any further, shout out to Foot Fanatics, the sponsors of today's video. Foot Fanatics are a fantastic Brazilian retailer who specialise in South American shirts and they're really, really good at sending shirts to Europe as well, to the UK. Their prices are very competitive and even with shipping costs, you're paying a lot less than you would typically pay for a new European shirt. There's lots of rare shirts there, lots of shirts you can't get anywhere else. Thanks once again to them for sponsoring today's episode. Now, it's been a couple of episodes since I last did a giveaway, but today I want to return to that. And you can win this fantastic shirt, which is a collaboration between Icarus and Urban Pitch. Icarus, the kit manufacturer who do loads of good stuff. Those are really creative designs. And Urban Pitch, a great site. And this shirt was a collaboration between those two. Look at this, a fantastic black and white design. And you can win the shirt simply by leaving a comment on this video. That's all you need to do, guys. Comment on this video, say whatever you like, and you'll be entered into the giveaway for a chance to win this shirt in the next episode. And just to wrap up the introduction, another huge thank you, this time to my supporters on Patreon. Their names are at the bottom of the screen. And really, since I started my Patreon a few months ago, it's been so much fun getting to know some of these guys, chatting with them on Slack. And there's a great community. We're regularly talking in the week. And this is very much an open invitation as well. If you want to support me on Patreon, support me a little bit further and get a range of benefits, including a free shirt after so many months of support, you can join my Patreon. All the details are in the description below. As I say, there's a great community there and there's a range of benefits of which I'm hoping to add to this year, not only with the free shirt, but other good stuff which I've got in the pipeline. Now, anyone who is a regular at Phil's Corner will know I like to answer some questions, some comments from the last episode, so that's what I'm going to do now. First up, we have Juan Manuel Martinez, who says, Almirante Brown, it's a team from my hometown. Never thought I'd see them on a video like this. And it was really fun to share that shirt. I'll just share a picture on screen as well. This wonderful shirt, a really unique design. And this is just typical, really, of what we're seeing a lot of teams, much smaller teams, who otherwise would not be on the radar, releasing a fantastic shirt, a bespoke shirt, which captures the imagination and reaches across the globe to collectors all over the place. People like me who otherwise would never have heard of Almirante Brown. And yeah, great to hear Juan and really enjoyed seeing a couple of comments about that as well, not only on YouTube, but on Twitter. Raz says, I only buy football kits to wear. I don't know, I feel like it's wasted just to keep something like that in storage. Then you're going to understand why you keep it in storage. A storage kit will be worth more than the ones that you would wear every now and then. And Raz, I think that's a really fair point to say. Most of the time when people don't wear all their kits, uh, it is largely because of things like keeping them in good condition. And certainly I'm a bit like that. I talked about that, of course, in the last episode. I equally completely respect people who wear all their kits as well. I think that's great. And I do enjoy seeing pictures of people 
when they're out and about, maybe going on a hike or something and they're in a Bruce Banana show, I think that's great. Good on them. I don't think I'd have the guts to do that. But yeah, thanks for your comment, Raz. And on a similar note, Aaron says, I'm one of those collectors The buyers are put straight into the wardrobe and just leaves it to go up in value. And Aaron, that's great to hear. And I don't think there's any shame in that. I know some people, they kind of look down on people who do that and they think, why are you doing that? Why are you just buying a shirt only to never wear it, keep it away and then try and sell it on as a profit? Actually, I think that's perfectly viable. Having said all that, some people think that just by having a shirt, it's just going to go up in value no matter what. And actually, that isn't always the case. You've got to think about how readily available the shirt was. So something like the Verda Berman third shirt that we talked about uh, that's on M&M Direct and still available at M&M Direct, I believe, for £17. A lot of people have that shirt and a lot of people bought that shirt at that price. So there's going to be minimal resale value. And the value of a shirt is quite a difficult thing to track. Just when you think you've sussed it out, you have a situation like last year where Roman's third shirt and Inter's third shirt just simply wasn't that available and now they're really hard to find. But the long and short is think about the kind of shirts you're buying if you wanted to sell them on. So picking up shirts on eBay which maybe aren't available at retailers, that can be a really good way of getting value and finding shirts which simply don't have a lot of listings. So if you're looking for a shirt and you know there's 200 other listings, that's not going to be as valuable as something which only has a few listings because actually, surprisingly, even a shirt from a couple of years ago can be relatively rare simply because people aren't selling them or simply don't have a lot of them. So thanks, Aaron, for your comment. And indeed, if you are someone like Aaron who does buy with a view to selling on, I'd encourage you just to think about the kind of shirts you're buying because you can make a lot of money. It's not necessarily going to be a business for you unless you do have the capacity and you can start on a rival classic football shirts. But uh, it's definitely something to do, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And indeed, a lot of my best shirts, the shirts which have the highest value, have been partly financed by the profits of shirts that I've sold, shirts that I picked up on eBay for a 10 or 20 quid and sold on. And that is perfectly fine. I would encourage you to do that, actually. I think it's quite fun. It's not always easy. Sometimes you will make a loss, but that's part of the fun of collecting. To me, that is what collecting is all about. Having all these different pieces, and sometimes you pick up a shirt for cheap and you think you're going to sell it on but actually you grow to love that shirt you grow quite attached to it all those things are quite fun to me but yeah thanks Aaron for your comment Morgan says the end of season shirt that I'm really excited about is the Liverpool Nike Air Max 4th really recommend it Phil he says it's the kind of shirt that looks better in person and thanks Morgan it's great to hear that and great to hear that you like the shirt I wasn't a big fan of that collection and indeed because they weren't worn on the pitch like you've highlighted that to me devalues the shirt quite a bit I think even if a shirt is worn in just one game on the field uh, during the actual match so not a pre-match shirt but worn in the game it automatically goes up for me no matter the design and even though I myself and many other people call them fourth kits they weren't really marketed as fourth kits they're essentially lifestyle shirts in my eyes having said that I know a lot of people like the shirts and indeed the Liverpool shirt I think got a lot of the attention a lot of the love so yeah, thanks, Morgan. Thanks for the recommendation. I haven't seen the shirt in person, and it is a really good point that you make, because when you do see a shirt in person, often it takes it a completely new light. Often stuff is completely lost in the marketing, in the retail photos. Uh, but when you get up close, when you feel the material of the shirt, when you see the textures and the details, the hidden details often. But yeah, thanks, Morgan. Thanks for the recommendation. Not that I need any more shirts in my collection, but I'll certainly take a second look at that kit. And finally, Turtle says, I've just started collecting... What is the best way to start? And good question, Turtle. I do have a video on this, and it's one of my most popular videos. How to start a football shirt collection. I think it's actually a very interesting question. It's not as simple as just start spending money, because there's so many different routes you take. Are you going to be the kind of collector who wants to collect a specific team or a specific set of kits? Maybe it's going to be kits from Porto's history, and you just want to collect every Porto kit from the last 20 years. Or maybe you're someone who just simply wants to buy shirts that are interesting from any team across the world. Maybe you're someone who just wants as many kits for as little as possible. Whatever type of collector you are, it's a lot of fun. So I would recommend checking out the video that I did. And indeed, there's lots of tips that can hopefully act as a springboard. Just to pick out a couple of the key themes, make sure that you plan ahead. Things like a budget can make a big difference because it's very easy to just grab every deal you see. And very quickly, you've spent hundreds of pounds on a lot of shirts that you don't really like. But if you budget, if you plan ahead, you could feel a lot more in control to say, no, I'm not going to buy that shirt, even though it's a good deal. And that's one of the biggest things. I think particularly at the moment, there's very much a culture of grabbing all these deals because everyone's doing it. It's that FOMO, fear of missing out. 
And that's not a good way to collect because you can very easily, as I say, spend a lot of money and then when a shirt comes along that you really like, you just simply can't justify it or at least you shouldn't justify it. And the other big thing I would say as a budding collector is to be on social media, be on Twitter, be on Instagram because when you're interacting with the community, you can often see the best deals, you can often trade shirts, maybe sell shirts to fellow collectors. There's all those good things which you don't get if you just acted as a lone wolf, so be part of the community. That's how I started. That's how I started writing about kits. I was just chatting on Twitter with fellow collectors. And there's so many people. The community has grown loads. There's so many new accounts I see every week. So whether you're just starting or whether you've got a massive collection that you've never shared with the world, join on Twitter and Instagram. Join other people like myself. Share pictures of your shirts, share the enjoyment and the love for shirts. Because football shirts are more than just showing off what you've got to each other. It's that very simple, pure joy of seeing a kit, maybe it's a new kit or an old kit, and just falling in love with the design, the colours, the patterns, the stories attached to it, the players that wore it. And even if your collection is two or three shirts strong, that's all it takes, guys. You don't need to have a big collection to get involved, to chat, to share. So Turtle, jump in, mate. Jump in with two feet. And enjoy the wonderful world of football shirts. Check out that video and I hope that will be helpful to you. But guys, I can't wait anymore. I've spent far too much time talking and not enough time opening this box. I'm actually just going to open it on camera now. Firstly, before I open it though, I do just want to say how good a Dortmund for branding their cardboard box like this. It's so much more exciting to receive a package like this than it would be just to receive a plain box. Not all clubs do this. In fact, very few clubs do it. Certainly not this well. And I did see a couple of people joking that this box was one they wanted to keep, that they wanted to uh, keep this, maybe have it on a wall like I've got some of the boxes next to me. But yeah, as good as this box is, the stuff inside it is even better. Let's take a closer look. Let me get my scissors and let's cut into this. And if I go silent for a few seconds, I've probably cut too far. I love how even the tape is branded. And there we go. All looking good. We'll go down the middle. Lovely stuff. So I've got the box here. It's quite a big box actually. Oh yes, here we go guys. Here we go. Now when I heard that the special edition shirt was going to be in a box, I was very excited. This is beautiful. It's not just a cheap box as well. It's quite a thick box and there's a nice raised texture to the crest. And you already know guys, this is going to go in the corner. Uh, maybe I'll have to put it next to my Valencia box. But I love this and already we're getting a sense of what's inside the shirt. We've got that lovely luminous yellow colour. And if I put it up to the 90s shirt now, you can already see the similarities. Oh, I'm so excited to see this. I'm so excited to see this in person. There's the yellow there on the inside. It feels really quality. This presentation puts to shame a lot of other shirts that you can get. And even limited edition shirts and things like that often don't come in boxes as good as these. And it's only going to get better, guys. Let's go into this one now. There we go. Before I show the shirt, just a quick look at the inside of the box. I love this colour. I mean, I'm basically wearing that today. And indeed, quite a few of the things on this set are this colour. This kind of electric vault, uh, luminous yellow colour, whatever you want to call it. But it gets even better. Here is the special edition Borussia Dortmund shirt. Seeing this in person, it does not disappoint. There's so much you want to say about this kit. It actually, it's even better on the back, guys, and we'll get to that in a second. But let's just quickly talk about some of the best features here. Puma have gone with their retro logo. This is their more classic design with the cat and the word mark. Really like that. And the colour, we should probably talk about the yellow once again. Now, this shade, of course, is synonymous with Borussia Dortmund in the 90s. And many of the Borussia Dortmund kits of the 90s had this wonderful luminous shade, which was quite controversial at the time. I don't think many fans at the time liked it from what I've heard. But it's going to become a bit of a cult classic. And for people like me, who are obsessed with the kits of the 90s, just seeing that shade evokes so much nostalgia. And it looks great. Of course, that crest should never be redesigned, should never be rebranded. It is perfect in my eyes. 
And I love how this shirt has some similarities to the 90s kit, again, if I hold it up to here. But it is different, it's not the same kit. And even the sponsor, guys, the one-on-one -on -one sponsor hasn't been universally loved. But the fact that it's actually just this white portion as an application, rather than a square, rather than a black square, you can still see the pattern on the inside. That's a really nice touch. As if all that wasn't enough, let's flip the shirt around now. And we've got the wonderful typeface, and it's massive on the shirt there. I went for G Bellingham. A lot of people went for Harland, but I wanted as many numbers as I could get. So I went for Bellingham with a 22 there. And this typeface has it all. This kind of 3D typeface, very, very retro. But yeah, like the colour, like the luminous yellow, it's a very Dortmund thing. Many of the Dortmund kits of the 90s had a typeface like this. Of course, the German tradition of having the T name on the top looks great there. And Bellingham's name at the bottom, if you can see that. But just pound for pound, this shirt could quite easily make a claim as the best of 2020, 21. Just a note on the sleeves, we've got the sponsor there, the Opal sponsor, which looks great. I know some people uh, were commenting on the fact that some shirts didn't have the Bundesliga patch, and indeed mine doesn't, so I don't know if that means anything. But regardless, this shirt, guys, is absolutely wonderful. It's certainly one of my favourites this year. And I just love, again, if I compare it to the 90s shirt, in many ways, this feels like a kind of evolution. It's not the same shirt, but honestly, I think Puma have done a really good job. The fact that they've actually paid tribute to the 90s in their own style, with their own take, I'm really impressed when I put these shirts next to each other. As much as I love Nike, as much as I love Dortmund shirts from the 90s, I'd probably take this Puma shirt. And that says a lot. I honestly love having this shirt in my hands. It has lived up to the hype. And I do actually want to say a thank you to Stephen who runs the account Tiny Jerseys. He actually picked the shirt up for me. Because on the day of its release, I was way too late to join the queue. And Stephen, who was already in the queue, was able to pick me one and send that. So thank you to you, Stephen. And if you were lucky enough to get hold of one of these, or if you've got it on pre-order and it's going to arrive in a few months' time, you've got a lot to look forward to. Get hyped, get ready, uh, because this shirt really does live up to its billing. In my excitement to open the box, I actually missed a lovely little sticker here as well that I've got. I have to find something good to put that. But guys, there we go. That was the Borussia Dortmund Special Edition kit from this year. And I'm so pumped right now. Opening that shirt... It really was a lot of fun. And yep, yeah, just comparing it again to the 90s shirt, it really holds up well. It really is a good example of retro inspiration, of 90s inspiration, done well with its own take. And the thing that I was really keen to see for myself in person was the similarities in the colour, was to see how faithfully that luminous yellow uh, was replicated in the new kit. Pure did a great job. It's pretty much like for like. Of course, there are differences in the material type. And this 90s shirt is slightly more faded, but that is a really decent job. You know, if I actually played football, <laughs> I could have a really nice kit boot combo, couldn't I, with these Nike Phantom Renoms. Uh, pretty close match there. And there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. If you did enjoy it, let me know, because I'd be very happy to do more. And I've got a couple more really interesting, quite rare shirts on the way, which I'm considering doing as an unboxing. So if you enjoyed this format, if you enjoyed this sort of thing, let me know. Or maybe you didn't enjoy it. Maybe you just want to go straight to the shirt and all the kind of boxing stuff kind of got in the way of that. Let me know either way. I love receiving your feedback. And yeah, I'm not going to stop grinning for the rest of today. I'm really happy with this shirt. Look how good it looks there. But yeah, well done Puma and Dorman. You've absolutely smashed it out of the park. As we wrap up, guys, don't forget to enter the giveaway for the Icarus urban pitch collaboration shirt simply leave a comment just comment and tell me what you think about this shirt and you're entered into that giveaway and thank you to my sponsors for today foot fanatics my supporters on patreon and quite simply to you guys for watching and supporting phil's corner but i hope the rest of your day goes well guys and i'll see you soon for the next episode